Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Yes, it is finally done. Here's the last video on actually building it. Let's dive in. Last time on Wood by Wright, we finished all of the pieces and so we can do the first dry assembly and this all goes together and I'm very, very happy. At this point, I wanna make sure everything is marked because I'm gonna be taking the tape off of the pieces. So as I pull them out, I'm gonna be putting little marks on the tenons and other places that will be inside the furniture. Uh, that way, when I go back together, I'll have all of them out there because I won't have all of my blue tape on them. Uh, blue tape is great for the assembly and keeping track of the pieces, but eventually you're gonna to need to do the finest, final bit of prep on there. And so I like to actually make the marks inside um, to know where do they all go? Um, <laughs> because you're, you're gonna to get to the glue up and you're gonna be hurried and you're gonna be trying to get everything done in time. And then you're gonna realize that, oh, tab A doesn't go in slot B, it goes in slot A. Uh, so yeah, one of those things just to, to think through, make sure that everything is labeled before the glue up. Uh, and this one ended up being a very, very tight fit up. I wanted it to be solid because this whole thing is going to be glued up. It is not going to be coming apart. Everything on it is um, very, very significant. And so, yeah, <laughs> for driving out through tenons, a lot of times I like to use the, the bigger files. Uh, my old ones that are beat up and really don't work anymore, they actually make really good pushing sticks. So we, now we need to do all of the final prep. And this is the part where things get tedious because there is a lot of little final pieces that you always forget about. Um, particularly on this, there's a lot of chamfering. Almost all the pieces are gonna have to have some amount of chamfering. Uh, making sure you chamfer off the bottom of the feet so when you put it on the floor the first time you slide it, you're not gonna be chipping off a piece. Um, and then making sure you're chamfering the right edges and not the edges you don't want to chamfer because uh, there's going to be a lot of those. Sure, if the, the uh, stretchers are running underneath the top, the top of the table, I don't want to chamfer the edge that's going to be up against the top. Um, so make sure that you're on the right side. After I get all the chamfers roughly put in, then I'm going to come through with the card scraper and do the final trim on this whole thing and smooth it all out do all the last little details and make sure that everything feels good. Um, and so I kind of do this in conjunction with the, uh, um, the, the chamfering, um, making sure that everything is exactly the way I want it. Then the very last thing I do is hit it with a little bit of 400 grit sandpaper. Now this really isn't to rough up the grain at all. Uh, it's more or less to create sawdust to force into the wood. Uh, and that sawdust will actually wick the, uh, the finish in a little bit more, uh, gives the finish a, something a little bit more to grab onto. And for the finish, I'm going to be using Rubio Monocoat on this. Um, on the rest of the bedroom furniture, I actually ended up using water locks, um, but uh, we'll talk about that later when we get to it. So for holding the tops on, I'm going to be using figure eight clips. And to do that, uh, you need to drill little holes for the screws to go into because we don't want to be busting out this thin three quarter inch piece. And of course, the drill bit stops turning. <laughs> and then I'm going to come in with a bit that is the same diameter as the large size of the figure eight clip. I can chisel back in on either side so that the figure eight fits into there. Um, oh, excuse me, on this one I actually made it for the small size. It really doesn't matter which one you put on which. Um, I, I do differently on each one. Sometimes I'll put the, the big one if I have thick stretchers, and if I have small stretchers, then I'll put the small size. Um, but yeah. The other piece I need to put in for hardware is one handle. So I'm going to measure out where the center of this is and find out where the screw spacing needs to go and uh, drill two holes for this. Um, this one, you want to be careful because there isn't a whole lot of leeway. You only have the, the, the size of the head to overage the holes, but you don't want to make them too small because you make them too small and then it's going to be a tight fit. Um, and so usually I like to go about a 16th inch larger than the diameter of the screw. So we're going to mark these off, and with a marking gauge, I can mark down the depth um, to make sure that the handle is level, and then I can figure out where the handles are for where their distance is in. And then we can bore the hole. Sorry, every video's got to have a boring part. <laughs> and uh, the nice thing about this is that that's all you need to do for the hardware. I'm going to put it on there and test it, make sure that everything goes in, and that's what I like. It's just a simple piece of hardware with a nice little handle to pull on. I was originally thinking about putting, uh, making a drawer pull for it, something kind of shaker style. Um, and I tried to find the ones that I originally got for the dresser. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to find those exact ones again. So, oh well. Now for the glue up, I'm going to be using epoxy. And one of the big reasons for that is it has a crazy open time. It has about six hours to work with it. And this is going to take me, it ended up taking me a little over 48, uh, 40, a little over four hours. The other nice thing about it is that it scrapes off very easily. It doesn't work down into the grain as much as high glue will. Um, and I find it to be a little bit easier to clean off once it dries. 
Uh, that's just a personal preference. Um, everyone's going to like it a little differently, but I like epoxy for that. And so if it smears out a little bit, then, oh well, I'm going to be able to clean that up rather easily afterwards. I was originally thinking about actually pre-finishing this all and then gluing it up. Um, but in the end, I just decided that the amount of cleanup that will need to be done afterwards wasn't a huge deal. Um, so I'll show you how to do that. Now, make sure you put enough glue on it. <laughs> you, you're, you're never going to squeeze out the glue, uh, but you're never going to be able to get more glue in there. And it's better to squeeze out and have drip off than it is to, oh, no, I didn't have enough. And epoxy is good at gap filling. So if you have gaps, that's the glue you want to use. Um, P PVAs and high glues really aren't very good at gap filling. And then we can start putting it all together. And it was around this time I was realizing, wait a second, um, I got the wrong leg on. And I, I had to pull the whole thing apart uh, because I put the wrong leg on the wrong side. And that's one of the things I love about epoxy. It's not a problem. This has not kicked yet. It won't kick for a while. And uh, yeah, oops, um, that's going to flip out. If I'd been using PVA, this would be an absolute horrible disaster because I wouldn't be able to flip it all back around. Now the slots are facing the correct direction and we can continue on. So yeah, um, epoxy saves the day. <laughs> for the top, I needed to put the, the stretcher between those two, uh, but for the two sides, I decided to assemble those all as a separate unit and then put them into place. So I can put the, the top stretcher on in between the back two legs, and then we can make those individual panels one at a time. And this, these are the, this is the tricky part, um, because there are four of one and six of the other. You need to make sure they're the right ones, and that's why I put all those numbers on them, so I know that they actually go together. <laughs> um, put a little dab of glue um, in between each one, and then we can fit them in. And I just wanted to make sure that everything works, so I did a little dry glue up to make sure that, yeah, that's the way it's supposed to go. Um, and then we can actually apply the glue, because uh, it's better to not have to take it apart like I did before yeah. for some reason. Uh, the other thing I did at this time is that the amount of glue I mixed up was a little bit too much. You may have noticed that initially, um, and the pot started to kick off, um, so I had to mix up another batch um, that wasn't quite as much. Yeah, there. Let's make a slightly smaller amount. <laughs> because, yeah, it's fun when the epoxy suddenly goes off and you have this epoxy that's going incredibly hot. Um, that's why you never mix it in a paper cup, because I've actually had the paper cups catch on fire, um, because the epoxy gets hot enough to actually catch the paper cup on fire. Um, scary, but yeah, that's why I like plastic cups. They just melt, and I've never had a problem with them. So now we can actually get into the glue up. Again, apply more glue than you need. Squeeze out can be fixed, but a lack of glue cannot be fixed. And uh, then assemble it. And so putting together these side pieces is a bit tedious because you have to wiggle all the pieces together to make them fit in. Um, but take your time and have patience. Now, if you're doing this with a PVA, um, you've got to hurry. And uh, that's where frustrations really kick in. And so that's one of the reasons why I like going with epoxy is that it, it slows things down. It makes it a little bit easier, and I don't have to worry. I don't have to rush. I've got the time I can play with it. Um, even with high glue, um, you can you can slow high glue down a bit, um, but not as much as what I'm what I'm doing here. So I would I would be I would be rushed with high glue. Then we can put that into place. One more stretcher to go across the top, and then start clamping it all down in. You can see how there's a few gaps here and there, um, and I like to make it so that the clamps can actually force things together. Um, and get that, that final tightness to bring it in um, so that they're not right where they need to be until a clamp really pulls it all in and snugs it up. And this needs uh, quite a few clamps, actually, to hold it together from all sides. Um, and there's one goes from this direction to that direction, one goes from that direction to this direction, and one goes there to there. <laughs> I, I was planning on only having like four or six in this, and I think in the end I had like 10 clamps total on it. Um, and I wish I'd put a few small spring clamps on the hash on the side because some of those didn't fully adhere to each other. Um, so I had a little bit of gap in there. And if you look down there closely, you'll see that some of them aren't um, completely flush. And I wish that I'd put a, a couple little spring clamps on there, but oh well. You live and you learn, and then the next time you make it better. But uh, that's the reason why we end up making more furniture because we learn from the previous furniture. So, there's the glue up. Now we can set this aside, let it fully cure, and come back the next day and do all the cleanup on it. And one of the reasons why I like epoxy is it, it cleans up beautifully well with the scraper. You can flex the scraper and do the final little detail on here and get right up tight onto things and clean up the glue beautifully. Uh, really, all of the glue up on this with all the squeeze out all the way around 
took uh, probably about 30 minutes, so it really wasn't that bad at all. And then after that, I'm just going to hit the spots that I scraped with a little bit of uh, 400 grit sandpaper, and we're ready to move on to the tenons. Um, I was originally thinking about shaping all of the tenons ahead of time, but I prefer to do those after the fact, um, just because... I, I, it doesn't take that much more to do them after the fact, but to do them before, if you don't do them perfectly, then they'll show up. So I'm just going to cut them down so that they're sticking out a little over an eighth inch. That's about where I found it. So I, I initially make the tenons to stick out a quarter inch and then cut them back to about an eighth inch so that I have a little bit to wiggle with. Then we can come in with the chisel, bevel down, and slowly work on these and take them down. Um, if I had a rabbited shoulder plane, I might do these, um, but at this time I did not yet have my uh, rabbited block plane, and that might work for some of these, but for some of these where I'm getting up tight into the corner, uh, the chisel is what you want. And I can just take them right down to that little chamfer I want. Again with the sandpaper, just the, the quick touch up on all of it, especially on the end grain from all of those. Again, just putting dust into the pores so that it will draw the finish in a little bit more. I'll come back with a rag um, and wipe it off. I like to use uh, just some um, uh, alcohol or mineral spirits or something of that nature to wipe off the excess dust that's sitting on top. Um, sometimes even with just a dry rag is enough. And then we can apply the finish. And this is where the fun part happens because, um, especially with this, with that that, uh, that white oak, it's gorgeous. Uh, yeah, oh, and I forgot to mention the, uh, the figure eights. Those have to go on as well. Um, do these before gluing on the top, otherwise um, you're in problems. Now, I didn't actually glue the top on this one, uh, at least on the top. On the bottom one, the top is actually glued in because it's held in underneath the top structure. Um, so those you have to do before you glue on the top structure. So just make sure you get that done. Um, I do pre-drill pre all of these because I don't want to be breaking heads off and putting them in. Um, so initially, yeah. Luke, why did you show that I was using a power drill? I don't use drills, do I? No, no, we don't do that. <laughs> Initially, I was using Phillips screws, and so for the initial setup, um, I had these ones on there. Um, I, I generally don't like using Phillips screws, but those are what came with it. Um, when I did the, the final glue up, I ended up actually using some flatheads, and yeah, that one was... Especially in this where you're working in a tiny little space trying to get things up underneath. Uh, it was an absolute, absolute pain. But here's the fun part. Now we can apply the finish. And I'm using Rubio Monocoat. Now I used water locks on the original dresser and bed. Um, and I, I love water locks. It looks amazing, but it has this film finish. And I, I was going back and forth because it is a full set. And to really make the finish match, I should have put water locks on it. But I absolutely love Rubio Monocoat. And so I ended up deciding to go with Rubio Monocoat. It's just so much easy. It's so much easier. So simple. So nice. It smells good. One finish and it's done 15 minutes and you're over. And it is an amazing finish that I absolutely love. Uh, it just looks very different from water locks. So, um, yeah. Uh, if you want to see more about it, I just did a video um, on the second channel where I actually went into depth about what it is, why I use it, and how to apply it. Um, it has become my go-to finish for furniture um, because it's the closest finish I have found to boiled linseed oil and paste wax but yet still having a protective finish on there because boiled linseed oil and paste wax are not protective. They're not going to stop stains and other problems, whereas this really is durable, and especially with three kids in the house, uh, it's what we did our dining room table in, and it's amazing how it has stood up. And just look how it makes that grain pop. It is ah, so happy. Um, yeah, this was a lot of fun to put together. So... There's the final shots with the finish, and I am in love with how this came out. Looking forward to using it every night. <laughs> so happy. Hmm. Yes, uh, I'm very, very happy to have this. Looking forward to using it every night. Uh, yeah, it's designed to match the other pieces in the house. So if you haven't seen the bed and the dresser build, well, you can go check those out. Uh, we will be having plans available for this yet. They're not out just yet. Um, if they are, you'll see them down in the description down below, but we're going to have one more video coming out that's a compilation of building the whole thing so you can see it all in one because it's almost taken a year to build this stupid thing. <sighs> Surprise. <laughs> Hand tools are enjoyable, but they're not always the fastest. It's about the process, not the project.
I'm sure there are lots of questions about this. If you have those, throw them in the comments down below. That does actually help out the channel. Anytime you put a comment down below, even if it's just a simple comment down below, thank you. Um, honestly, that helps us get in front of more people, helps the channel grow, and means a lot. If you want to take it even farther, you can click the like button, the share, and the subscribe. And those things do help out. But even farther, there are a bunch of names over here. Those are all the fantastic, wonderful, and benevolent people over on Patreon. Without patrons, well, we wouldn't exist. We're completely sponsored by you. So thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more about that, there are links to Patreon down below, or um, click the little join button and become a member here on YouTube. We have special perks for both. I think I'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. And that is why when finishing a project, it is best to use finish finish.